feels good to be back. It feels even better because Christmas came earlier this year. Now, some of you may be wondering, Hugo, where have you been? How come you haven't been uploading? Uh, your team sucked. Okay, look, I've been in school. I was very busy. I had a lot of work to catch up on, and um, I do have things going on outside of YouTube. So, I my uploading has been very slow and inconsistent. But for the next couple of months, I'm gonna make sure I upload more frequently. And I'm gonna spend a lot more time into YouTube, make sure I get a lot more videos out. So that's just a quick little um, disclaimer, I guess you want to call it. Let's get back to the video. Now, Christmas is my favorite time of the year. Presents, family. Oh, and guess what? Jose Mourinho has finally been sacked by Manchester United. He's no longer United manager. And for me, this is something I felt coming, but I did not see he was gonna come so early into the season, even though we're already halfway through, but you know, whatever. I was originally going to make a different video. Um, I might release that later in the future, but I woke up today in the morning to the news that Jose Mourinho was sacked. He's no longer a manager, and honestly, this is something I'm very grateful for. When he first came in, he did have a good impact. We definitely are better than we were before he got here. Many would argue otherwise, but I believe that United did go on. We did win some silverware under him, which is something we needed. We needed to get back into winning ways, but of course this season, it's been dre dreadful. Like, our football has gone, or sorry, our soccer has been, it's been subpar. And that's that's to compliment it. Our last one came at Fulham, a 4-1 victory, and that was a good little cushion for him. I was a little break, I would say. Fulham are very in the bottom of the table. Anything under a 3-0 win or a 4-1 win like we got would would be trouble. If we were to get 1-0 win, I would have been disappointed. But that kind of just got everyone's hopes up a little bit. Some people believe that was a turning point in, in, point in our season. But I, I believe that it was just... A routine win you know but our our true challenges lied when we went to Liverpool when we played Valencia that's the games we should be winning not games against last team place full hand so we lost 3-1 Liverpool I could tell by the lineup I saw the lineup tweeted out very defensive almost almost about three quarters of the team was meant to just stay behind the line no attacking, no creativeness whatsoever, and it's just been the story of our season so far. Just nothing. People falling asleep in the games. No, no one wanting to play for the team. You can tell most of the players there aren't even trying to play for the badge. Almost everyone there just look disruptful. It almost looks like the Chelsea team that played under him before he got sacked. That's what the current United team looks like, and that should something that should never be happening. Losing 3-1 to Liverpool, that should have been the last straw. But no. Then we go on. We before we play Liverpool, we went against Valencia. How did we not? That game was just dreadful. That should not be the United team that we know. And I think under Jose Mourinho, while we did improve some towards the latter stage of his tenure we we went under real bad so the caretaker manager has yet to be announced but i'm not i have a couple of ideas but i don't really think there's anyone in the market right now that can come in and just bring up the team whatever it be so i think this season we'll be lucky if we finish in the top i don't even want to say top four i don't even think top four is a real option right now as it is I think we're what 12 13 points off Arsenal in fourth place the last round of 16 in Champions League we played PSG I don't know I think the last hope for someone we have this season is the FA Cup run but that all depends on who comes in for the season yeah it's yet to be announced and there are a couple of names being thrown around one of the big names that was being thrown around earlier is Zinedine Zidane. Of course, he left Real Madrid after winning three successful Champions Leagues. And many are on the fence about him just because some say he inherited a great squad. Others say he's good with man management. I believe he's very good with man management, handling each player individually. You see with Ronaldo, he really did get the best out of him. He made careful little tactics, tweaks to each of his players. And I think that's what he's really good at. But... I don't know if he'd be a good fit for a team that is not used to winning waves, not used to winning silverware after season after season, I, at least until 
Sir Alex Ferguson left, so I don't know if he'd be the right man to come in and repair this the state that the squad has been left in. One of my biggest complaints about Jose this season was his use of Andres Pereira. Pereira, after spending two seasons alone in Spain with different teams, albeit, he had a very good preseason in the United States. I, I got the pleasure of watching him when they played San Jose Earthquakes. He, for the, almost all the preseason, he played in the holding defensive mid position. He played a little bit more far back. And then he, fast forward a couple, fast forward to now, he doesn't play, he doesn't play. He played in the beginning of the season a little bit. He goes a couple, he goes like almost two months without playing, being on the bench. Fast forward to the game against Valencia. He plays it, Andres Pereira out wide. Now, I really don't know what's happening. When you have Matic, who has been very bad this season, ever since he got his injury earlier in the season, he has not been, he was not the player that Chelsea had. He's not the player we got in the very first season. I think his old age is probably starting to catch up to Matic. He's a very great player when he signed, but now I'm starting to have my doubts in him, and I'm still wondering why he plays in almost week in, week out when we have Andres Pereira on the bench just running away. When he's a very good player, I know that he might have not have the experience he needs, but this is a perfect season for him to get that experience since most of our challenges have already been done away with. There's no way we're going to be able to catch up to the to Liverpool on the top of the table. There's no way we're going to be able to win the Champions League at this point right now. So I think it's better just to throw Andres in there. Matt, Andres can have a very good future at this club if he decides to stay and if he starts playing regular regular soccer week in, week out. There's no point for him to stay if he's just going to sit there and rot on the bench, which is what Jose Mourinho has done with him so far. Now, in his time at United, Jose Mourinho signed 11 players spending about 350 million pounds and Almost none of those signings have been the signings that we needed. We have not made, we have not signed any players that would stand up and become natural leaders in the team. He signed Victor Lindelof, and Lindelof has not enjoyed the best stint here in England. In his first season, he didn't play that much. He was not in the first team. He, whenever he did play, he struggled a lot. He wasn't that accustomed to the English game, but now, he definitely did step it up. He, in some of the Champions League games, he, especially yeah, the one against Juventus where we won 2-1, he played really good that game. He was finally starting to show some of his true colors that he did at Benfica, but he got injured. Next, Eric Bailly. Eric Bailly, when he first started playing, everyone thought he was going to be the next best defender. He was aggressive. He was tough as nails. He was scared to put in a tackle. But unfortunately, injuries have plagued him from playing and from showing his true colors. And now, whenever he does play, he is very error prone. Next up, it's Alexis Sanchez. It, Alexis Sanchez wasn't really bought, but he was traded for Mkhitaryan. Alexis Sanchez has not been the player he was at Arsenal at all. He shows maybe five minutes of that true Arsenal player he was, and then the rest, he just disappeared for the rest of the game. Now, Mourinho has had plenty of money, I believe, and plenty of time to develop this team into the team he always moans that he needed. He always moans that this isn't the team yet. This isn't my team yet. You've had about, you've had enough time, I believe, to make this, mold this into your own team. You've had more than enough money and you've had the backing you needed. Albeit, you may have not been able to sign the central defender this summer, but you did, you already signed two and I believe it's two at least one of them should have came out better, you know what I'm saying. He signed Fred. Fred has barely played this season. Whenever he does play, he, I believe he's, he does good. I, I like Fred. I like him in the starting lineup, but he doesn't play. He barely gets on the bench. Now, Tugba, he hasn't played for the last two games. Oh, sorry, he didn't play the last game against Liverpool. He stood, all, he stood the whole game in the bench. How are you going to leave one of your best players on the bench sitting there to rot there? Pogba is like the one of the best leaders that we have. You've seen it with France. The World Cup. That video came out. He gave him the speech. Pogba is one of the best leaders, I think, in that dressing room. And he's just going to strip away the captain's suit from him? I believe he, had, he did handle that situation very bad. Uh, there was... I don't have the stats off the top of my head, but I do know when he was captain, he did perform a lot better. He was a natural captain. He didn't look scared to take on that role. He looked ready. And I think like, he's gotten a lot of stick, undeservedly so. Although he he's not 
the player he's not Juve either. He's he hasn't had the best thing, but I believe under the right manager, Pogba can flourish again in Martial. He's recently been coming back to the first team. He's been scoring in goals. He has been stepping it up again. He's starting to look at the player he was when he first signed as well. Although he, as well under Mourinho, he went on like, he disappeared for a couple months. Mourinho wasn't putting in the team. There's talk of him leaving. And now look at him now he's scoring in the goals. But I believe it was time for Mourinho to go. He was not advancing the club anymore. He took the club to where he could. And after that, I believe that he just did it, didn't know how to keep advancing the club to what it needed to be. Now, for the caretaker manager, there has there's been a lot of talk. Um, from, from what I've seen, Michael Carrick is not going to take over. Although I would have, I would have probably enjoyed Michael Ter Carrick. I think he would have done a decent job. Not much worse. He couldn't really bring us more down than we already are. So I think he would have done a good job. But from what I've been seeing, they're gonna go with an external manager, an external caretaker manager for for the rest of the season, and then in the summer try to go after a long-term manager and oh my god if we were able to land someone like Mauricio Pochettino who he's probably thinking of leaving since Spurs always never win anything um if Mauricio Pochettino were to come here come to United get the money he needs he'd have more than enough ingredients to produce a winning team more than enough to get us back to where he needs to be Pochettino is one of the younger managers and he's one of the brighter ones as well He's one of the names being tossed in there. Of course, I mentioned Zinedine Zidane, but of course, he's a long ballpark away. He doesn't even, probably doesn't even want to come to England. He doesn't speak the language. I don't know how good of a fit he'll be, but Pochettino has been here for a season, a couple seasons now, or yeah, for, for a while. He completely transformed Spurs into what they are now, and I feel like he'd do a really good job here. Now, what does this next manager have to do for the rest of the season now? I believe one of the things that has to happen is get Pugba back to playing at his best. When you have your most gifted, talented player, technically gifted player sitting on the bench running away, you need to get him in there. You need to get him to show his true colors again. Show the player that played in France, that won the World Cup. Show the player he was a Juve, why we bought him in the first place. You need to get him back to playing his best. Another thing is Lukaku recently has been suffering a really massive goal drought. He's not been the player he was either he's recently dropped his, in his first season here he scored i think it was like 26 goals 27 goals which is really good but now he scored probably five i believe it was all season so his numbers have drastically dropped from last season he's not playing well either you need to find a way to find him make him find the back of the net again having a consistent goal scorer is one of the best things you need in a team that's basic soccer scoring goals how else do you win a game scoring goals you need a goal scorer and that's what Lukaku is he's a goal scorer he will bag you in the goals he just needs a service I believe that's another thing that's really hasn't helped him this season is the service he's not had decent service there's not most of the times there's a counter attack and he's the only one across the halfway mark fixing the issues at the back this season what's been a good help is Luke Shaw playing back at his best he's picked up the pace he's worked hard there was a time where he looked like he was going to leave too jose was battering him week in week out about his work rate about his style of play he didn't like him and i gotta give credit to Luke Shaw. he took out like a man he's come back he worked and now he's back to being a consistent player he's almost always in the first team not recently because he did get a little knock but he's had a good season he's making a comeback now, I can't say the same for everything else. Chris Smalling just had a new, I think, a five-year contract, which I get it. He's been at the club for a while now, but he's not, again, he's not a defender that's going to win us titles. He's he's not the player that Manchester United need. Neither is Phil Jones. Phil Jones, who did a horrible display scoring an own goal. That was... Sorry, that was... Yes, I was just scoring an own goal against Valencia. And then Marcos Rojo scoring own goals for Arsenal. Like, what kind of defenders do we have at this team? We need good defenders, young defenders. We've been, we had our choices in the summer, but of course the board decided not to back Mourinho. Albeit some of the defenders that he did sign, he's, he did have his chance to sign a good defender when he signed Victor Lindelof, when he signed Eric Bailly. We know, we know he doesn't always have the best choice when it comes to players, but that's another thing that's setting up a good defense. We have 
in my opinion, the best goalkeeper in the whole world in David De Gea. He's he's considered a lot this season for a player of his class. It is not it's not because he's dropped in form. It's because there's no one blocking him. There's no one in front of him. They're just letting players dribble past him. There's no organization back there and whenever something chaotic does happen, it always looks like someone it always looks like someone's vulnerable to crashing down. Just like the, just like Marcos Rojo did against the Arsenal game when he gifted them that goal. He passed it to Obama Yang and he just scored a no goal. We need to set up a organized defense. We need at least some kind of organization, even if the players aren't good, as long as they have a decent thing of what they're doing, David De Gea will make it will be able to cover their best. He's pulled out a couple of amazing saves so far in the season, especially against that young boys when they almost uh, went ahead towards the closing stage of the minutes. He's had some remarkable saves so far this season, and he will continue to perform week in, week out. He's not something that would be seen in the link as other may argue that he's been conceding a goal every, almost every game. But you know, it wouldn't be happening if he had a good defense in front of you. That's all I got really for this video. Um, like I said, I will be posting much more frequently. This was kind of like a rant, sort of. Um, I, for, for those that know me, I I love this club and. It pains me to see the, the what we're going through right now. It's pains me to see a manager that simply did not care. That would blame everything on his players. So, uh, yeah, I will I will be releasing another video probably in about like next week maybe or maybe in like four days. It all really depends. But I am going to be posting a lot more consistently. So, if you'd like the video, subscribe, comment, see if uh, there's anything else you would like me to talk about. Of course, no one really probably cares about my opinion. But hey, that's why you're here in the first place. So, yeah. Alright, I'll catch you guys in the next video.